Hello YouTube, welcome back to my channel. My name is Cara Janelle. Come on in and soak up some knowledge. As you can see by the title, today we are talking about seven ways to know that you're under witchcraft attack. Now, these are all pretty personal. Everything that I'm about to list to you, as far as these seven reasons, I have personally went through myself. So I'm not saying these are the only ways to prove it. And I'm not saying that if you're going through one or two of these things, it automatically means you have witchcraft on you, but stay tuned and, you know, listen to the reasons so you can determine if you're going through some of these things in your life and what you can do about it. So first off, we'll start with the definition of witchcraft. Witchcraft is controlling, manipulation, or changing events spiritually. It's also the use of magic. If you go online and look up the definition of witchcraft, it's going to see it, say the use of magic and black magic and sorcery and things like that. But the main goal of witchcraft is either to control a situation or someone, manipulate a situation or someone, or change the events via the spirit realm. So not physically doing it, not trying to say you're going to do this to a person in real life face to face, but doing it spiritually somehow, be it rituals, be it words, whatever it may be. This is what witchcraft is. And we're going to start this off with Ephesians 6 verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness in this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So according to the Bible, it makes it clear we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. This is not what we're up against. This is not what believers are facing. This is not what people in general are facing. This is what we're wrestling against is spiritual. It's all spiritual. The things you can't see. We're not wrestling against flesh and blood. So you're not fighting against, you know, your friend or your mom or your, whoever. You're not fighting against these people. You're fighting against the spirit. You're wrestling against the spirits. Principalities. Um, principalities are wickedness in high places, basically. Um, powers, that's pretty self-evident. Rulers of darkness in this world. You, if darkness, you know, that's not something good. And again, spiritual wickedness in high places. All of these things are spiritual things. All of these things are spiritual things. So we're, we're wrestling in the spirit. So um, I have seven reasons. And I'm going to start with unexplained pain and disorders now this can be a sign that you have witchcraft on you or working against you unexplained pain or disorders you're going you're feeling these pains you're going to the hospital and they're telling you nothing's wrong with you we don't see anything wrong with you you're having these weird unexplained movements in your body you know things of that nature happening and it's unexplainable just oh a sharp pain over here oh i don't know why this hurts over here things like this this can be witchcraft indications in your life. Um, unexplained sicknesses, your stomach's bloated, you don't know why. You know, this could be a witchcraft thing. You could be eating in the dream, which brings sickness into your body. Um, another big thing with unexplained pain or disorders. A lot of witchcraft workers, they do things according to the moon. New moons and full moons. I experienced this firsthand. Um, before I knew, like I had these witchcraft things on me, um, in the past, thank God, thank God that he's revealed things to me and I was able to fast and get delivered from these things. But these things really go on in people's life. So new moons and full moons. Um, if you dig into it, which I don't really suggest, but you know, if you have the mind where you can read things and not like fall deep into it, then maybe you can do a little research and see that people who um, do spells and stuff, they do it sometimes according to the moon if it's a new moon they'll do something then if it's a, a full moon they'll, they'll do something then like the sayings in the world like oh um you know it's a full moon so people are acting crazy or acting well but but spiritually and in the spirit realm for some reason they use these these times of the year these times of the month to do things spiritually and i remember um before i got this revelation about new moons and full moons that I would get these massive headaches, like these really, really bad headaches, like migraine headaches. And I would be thinking like, why does my head hurt so bad? I couldn't understand why my head was hurting so bad. And 
it would happen all the time. It would happen often. And then for some reason, this is before I was even a believer. Before I even believed in God, something was like, um, look up, look up, um, full moons. And it was a full moon. And then it would be like every month I'd be like, oh, this migraine that's happening. And I would look up, oh, it's a full moon. That's probably why. But I didn't think anything of it then. Like my mind didn't click like, this is weird. Why is this happening? And why are you just thinking like, okay, well, it's a full moon. So my head hurts. Why aren't you digging deeper into it? I didn't think about it. But until I, I came to the Lord and that revelation that I had gotten before I even was in the Lord really stood out. And I was like, okay, this makes a lot of sense. So dates and things like that, that they're doing performing rituals or something like that or even if you have unexplained body pain in the middle of the night three in the morning or something you know they may be doing something they may have you your image on an altar right then and it's causing unexplained pain or disorders so that is reason number one now let me make a disclaimer before i go any further if you don't believe in witchcraft if you don't believe that people are and can be working against you via the spirit realm doing things like that then you probably shouldn't watch this video because i don't need a bunch of comments in the comment section saying oh this isn't real because it is if you don't believe you can just click off that's disclaimer number one disclaimer number two is if you don't believe in dreams then you can click off too because a lot of a lot of the understanding that i got from this came from dreams and uh, we haven't got to that part but i just want to make that known that's just a disclaimer Reason number two, cobwebs and the smell of burnt things. You're in your house, no one's home, no one's cooking, but all of a sudden you smell like something's burning, like just a scent of something burning. This could indicate witchcraft in your life. Also, this is something I remember being 17 years old and it seemed like every time I went outside, cobwebs would be like all over my face or all over my, I would be like, what is this on me? What is this on me? Nobody else seen any cobwebs there. No one else could feel it, but I always felt like these cobwebs were on me. It wasn't until I got revelation through um, someone's video I was watching, probably Kevin Ewing. I know I said his name a lot, but um, if you guys want to get deep into it, you can watch Kevin Ewing's video because he has one video called um, Dreams Indicating Witchcraft in Your Life. And he goes deep, 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 deep into like, um, you know, things that are showing that you have witchcraft in your life. And I think that's where I got that um, cobweb thing from. But I would always feel like these cobwebs on me, cobwebs on my face or cobwebs on my body. Every time I went outside for years and I didn't understand it, I was like, why are there all these cobwebs here? But I would never see them. I would just feel it. Just feel like cobwebs on my, on my face or on my body or whatever. So that's reason number two. And the burnt smelling things, you know, people who do witchcraft, they burn things, burn candles, light their cauldrons and stuff like that. So, um, you know, you can be smelling these scents because they're doing things in the spirit realm. They're doing these things in the spirit realm and it's affecting you. You're smelling it. You're noticing it. So that's reason number two. Reason number three is starting over and over. Now, this is a big one. This is something that I went through in my life so much. I would get in great situations sometimes, great jobs and things like that. And then I'd end up somehow, some way having to start all the way over from scratch. Talking about start over from nothing. Like, and it would be unexplainable how it would happen. It would just be like, like I have this great job. I'm working. Everything's great. I'll get a new car everything's wonderful and then somehow uh, unexplainable situation okay now i don't have a car unexplainable situation okay now i don't have that job and it will always be something unexplainable it will always be something like i don't get why that happened like it would be a type of situation where it couldn't be fixed it just be you have and i'd have to start all the way over from scratch this happened probably like five or six times in my life as far as having to start all the way over completely from nothing Another thing that would happen in my life um, with the starting over thing was cars. I would get cars all the time. Literally from the first car I got, I had like seven cars. I think I'm on my eighth car now. And for some reason, they would always 
either get broken down or something would happen where I wouldn't have these vehicles anymore. Now, this is a time for story time because this is gets into more deeper explaining um, into witchcraft that was happening in my life personally. So if anyone watched my testimony video, in the testimony video, I talked about getting driving uh, my friend's car at the time and getting into an accident in this car. As an unlicensed driver, as an uninsured driver, didn't have a license, didn't have any insurance. What are you doing? supposed to be driving the car? I don't even think her car had insurance on it, but I was driving this car with one of my friends and we ended up hitting someone. And when we hit them, they hit someone and they hit someone. It was literally like three cars that had been hit um, in this accident. And we got out of the car and left. That's just what happened. If you watch my testimony video, I go deep into it. But the thing is, is that this started a series of unfortunate events in my life. Because if anyone knows the scripture, the scripture says, um, what does it say? Oh, if the thief um, is discovered, he must restore sevenfold of what was took. So let me tell you something. If you don't know, the Bible is spiritual. The Bible is spiritual. Like the, the words in the Bible they adhere, like they transform the spirit realm. This is why the Bible says, death and life are in the power of the tongue. You can have whatever it is that you speak. This is why the Bible says like, and put so much emphasis on your tongue. So, um, when the Bible says things in it, these things are like spiritual laws. So that scripture that says, um, once a thief is discovered, he must restore sevenfold of what was took. Now, this is something I just really recently got revelation on during fasting. After I crashed this girl's car, you know, things happened, blah, 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 blah. We ended up being friends somewhat again later. But this girl was a witchcraft worker since, uh, since I was a little kid and I knew this girl. She was into that. So witchcraft workers take the words from the Bible and they use it because it's spiritual laws. Now you can ask if any of you body, anyone who's watching this video know people who are into that. Um, you have family members who are into that. People who are into this new age thing, they use the spiritual laws in the Bible and they do whatever they're going to do with it because the spiritual law is a spiritual law. The spirit realm is the spirit realm. I know I said this before in the other video, but it's true. So when it says, once a thief is discovered, he must restore his heaven folded what was took. They can use that as a basis for whatever evil they're about to do against you. And that's what happened in my life. After I crashed your car, I had never owned a car at that point. And from then on, it, it was seven cars, seven whole cars that something happened to them. For some reason, I didn't have these cars anymore. To the point that through fasting, I got revelation and, and the Lord said, okay, this is, this is the reason. And before I knew what I knew, like when you have, you know, you know how they say no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Yes, that's true. But if you have open doors to the enemy, if you have things that you've done that are unlawful and you haven't went back and, and made it right, asked for forgiveness or whatever the case is, then these things are still open doors for the enemy and it can cause curses to kind of come upon you. So during the time of this, all these cars that I lost, I wasn't in the word of God. I wasn't serving God. I wasn't believing in him. I would, and all these things where I had open doors everywhere, not only just with the situation that happened with this person, but open doors in other places. So these curses that they were sending at me were working because there was nothing to hold it back. Yeah, I, I might have been praying every now and then, Lord, your word says no weapon formed against me shall prosper. But I had open doors that let these things happen. So I ended up losing seven total cars, seven. We're seven, that is the number seven, but seven full cars. Now this is unexplainable. I'm not even 30 years old yet. Why have I had seven, and this is my eighth car. But, and then the thing is, is that when I got this revelation, I started literally just like, I don't talk to this person anymore and you'll understand why as we get further into these reasons, but I just started sending them money because I'm like, Lord, if I owe these people any, it wasn't even me. I can't believe, I can't say it was me. The Holy Spirit led me to start paying them because I was thinking like, Lord, if I have any debt with this person and they continue to do this witchcraft against me and there's some type of open door, there's some type of reason. I don't want to keep reaping these bad things because there's an open door. There's a reason for this. So I, I believe now that, you know, 
after this seventh thing has been given to them, this seventh car, whatever that they stole via the spirit realm, um, I think it's over with. Because, because this year, 2020, I started having these dreams that I was in a car and the car was spinning around in the highway, spinning like in circles. And this happened, I think twice. I had two different dreams on two separate nights, two weeks, months apart. It was like, I had these two dreams that I was spinning around on the highway. And now the beginning of this year, I think maybe February, maybe February into January of this year, 2020, I'm driving on the highway, going to work. It's like maybe five in the morning, five in the morning, I'm going to work. All of a sudden I pass over this I don't even know what it was. It was like some type of metal thing that was on the on the highway because they were fixing the road at this point. But the thing is, is like that's not the emphasis on that because everyone else was driving over it. Everyone else was driving over it. Everyone else was perfectly fine. But for some reason this day, I drove over this thing and this car went spinning. I, I promise you, this car went spinning in the highway. I don't know if anyone's from Georgia, this was on pleasant hill i'm driving down i just got off of 316 i'm driving down pleasant hill trying to go to my job and um i pass over this thing my car spun i'm talking about 360 360 spins in the middle of the highway i'm just i'm trying to hold the steering wheel and i'm pressing on the brakes like and i'm screaming jesus 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 to literally this car end up on the median I'm driving this way. The car ends up on the median going the opposite way. The opposite way. The opposite way. I promise you. This car this car is going the other direction. I'm on the median. But everything's fine. I'm not hurt. I didn't have not a scratch on my car. Not a single scratch. Literally, I, I just drove off the median and started driving to work like nothing happened. Now, this is after I came into... The revelation from the Holy Spirit of once the thief is discovered, he must restore seven fold of what was took. And the Holy Spirit leading me to believe that this was the thing that she was using to do this witchcraft against me because of the fault that I had made with her car that she ended up losing um, via the accident that happened way long time ago. And when I started like coming into the Lord and closing these doors and asking for forgiveness and everything, then that curse that she was trying to send against me didn't work anymore. And this is not the first time that I had these dreams that I was going to get in a car accident, but this time it didn't take effect. Previous to that, in 2019, I had a dream. I just, it wasn't even a dream. I had a dream about it, but I was having full, like, like vision. It, I was awake and everything. I just kept feeling like, like, I don't know, like something was going to hit me like head on, hit me head on or something. And, um, like I kept having it for days upon days upon days. I could be wide awake standing up and I would just feel like I was going to run into something. And it happened. It happened. I slammed into a deer and that car was ruined. And then the thing that made it so bad, it wasn't even just me that it happened to. It happened to, I ran into this deer, head on collision, messed up the whole front of my car and the car ended up being total. And... A friend of mine that knew the same person, the same exact thing happened to their car. They didn't hit a deer though. Whatever they hit, the front of their car messed up in total. And then another friend that I had that also knew the person, the same exact thing happened. And, th and theirs was bad. Like someone just slammed into their car and took off, right? Head on collision and the person drove off. Unexplainable events happened. All three of us knew this person. And I'm telling you, this was after... Over and over again, I just have it like this this thing that I was going to run into something. I don't even know how to explain it. So if you're in these situations where unexplainable things are happening, you're having to start over from scratch or redo things. You're losing cars. You're having to get another car. You're losing jobs. Unexplainably, you're having to get another job. You're losing money. That's another thing, too. If you have a, if you work or if you do something, you have a business or something and you're having income, but you're never ever able to save. It's like no matter what money you get, you, you're losing it. This could indicate witchcraft in your life. Starting over and over again, never being able to reach where you're trying to reach could indicate witchcraft in your life. That's number three. Let's move on. Number four, C, 
sexual characteristics, inappropriate relationships, and just like unexplainable feelings for people that you feel like you shouldn't have. Have you ever liked someone and you'd be like, I don't know why I like this person. I, I don't know why I like this person. This could be indicating witchcraft in your life. Because a lot of times people run to the own cult and they run to sorcery and they run to witchcraft over relationships. Or they want someone that they can't seem to get in the natural so they'll start spiritually trying to achieve this person. And then all of a sudden you feel yourself drawn to someone that you said you didn't want or that you said you didn't like or you can't understand why you want them or why you like them. This could be indicating witchcraft in your life. So the story I have about this Actually, I have two stories. The story I have about this is um, when I lived in Florida, I worked at this hospital and this guy that worked at the hospital also was trying to like date me. Now, it was nothing serious. We were just talking, but um, like he, he started saying a lot of things that I didn't like. I didn't listen to my mind. I didn't listen to the Holy Spirit. I didn't listen to that that thing leading me like hey pay attention to that i just overlooked it so the first thing with him was um one time we, we were hanging out or whatever it, we weren't even hanging out like like i was in the car and and i was just like sitting outside talking to him and um he was like oh i would tell you to come inside but my mom and them were doing some ritual in the house and it's so loud huh what what are you talking about? But nowadays I would be like, well, wait, what? But then I was just like, oh, okay. I didn't think anything of it. I didn't think nothing of it. Okay. That's, that's, that's just a lead into what I'm getting into. Another thing was like, um, you know, in Florida, going to the beach anytime, any day is nothing. And like, literally if you're from Florida and you live in Florida, you don't go to the beach in the daytime. Um, if you're, you know, this color, you don't go to the beach. Like you just don't go to the beach like that. Really? Like rarely you might, but we would go to the beach at night. We would go to the beach at night because the beaches were open. Like we would go to the beach at night. So then one night we went to the beach with him and we were just like sitting there talking and he's like got a bottle and got a bunch of, um, a bunch of like seawater, like ocean water. And I was thinking like, like, what are you going to do with that? And then I thought, like, I started trying to, like, alter my mind, like, okay, what's he, what is he doing with that? What reason does he have that for? And then I thought, okay, maybe he has dreads, so maybe he's going to put it in his hair. Because, you know, like, people who have dreadlocks, sometimes they, they put their hair in salt water because it makes it lock faster. I was trying to think of all kinds of scenarios of why he was getting this word. But he was just like, no, I'm going to do something with it. Two and two didn't link in my mind. Then another time... um. And this is like, this is all like platonic things happening. I don't want anyone to think like this was like some, some weird stuff. But this, we were just like talking, talking, trying to get to somewhere, but it, it didn't really end up ever getting anywhere. So um, another thing that happened was he had me, this is, this is the icing on the cake right here. This is going to really get into what I'm talking about. He had me come over his house to help him with doing some paper Literally, I'm sitting there helping this boy type these two papers up, like two assignments, and I'm basically doing it, but people keep showing up to his house. People keep showing up to his house, like, and they're not for him. They're coming for his mom. People are coming to his house over and over and over again. Like, I'm telling you, like, four or five people came there within an hour, and they're all talking to his mom, getting things from her, passing money to her. Come to find out, his mom was some voodoo priest or I don't know what she was but she was somebody she was somebody in that realm she was somebody that people literally were coming to her to purchase whatever trinkets or to do spells or whatever they were coming to her for they were coming to her for that and this is this gets into the inappropriate or unexplainable feelings because it's like okay this is what happened. This boy, I was hanging out with him and he started putting like this type of potion all over his chest and his arm stuff. And this ain't nothing coming out of a lotion bottle. This isn't nothing coming out of a container. This is something in some unmarked like 
bowl or something that he's rubbing all over him and then then I feel myself like wanting to be with this person like feel myself looking at them differently from how I looked at them five minutes prior to that so when you get these type of things where you start feeling some type of way about someone that you didn't feel before intensely to the point that you're ready to to do some things you shouldn't be doing it could be indicating witchcraft in your life because people, I'm, I promise you, I promise you, I, I'm telling you, you don't even know how many people run to this stuff, this on cult, these type of things in order to get someone or to hurt someone or to do something. Someone broke their heart. They go to these things. They want to get someone that they feel like they can't get. They go to these things. People do this stuff. That's the crazy thing. Like we just seen it clear in Ephesians 6 12 that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood but people are out here girls are fighting other females over men men are killing other men over women but people aren't looking to the spiritual aspect of things people aren't realizing that we're not fighting against these people people are people are sitting back in their house laughing while these two chicks are fighting over someone when they have them because they're over there working the on call they're over there working sorcery so people do these stuff and another thing Witchcraft doesn't necessarily have to be a spell or someone does something or someone does a ritual. There's people who are just really open to the enemy, really sold out to the enemy that these spirits just transfer onto other people. Like, I don't know if I want to tell that story because it's kind of, you know, I don't, I'm just going to say like, if you're around someone if you're around someone who is open to the enemy, open to these spirits. Now, it doesn't have to be purposely. They may not be trying to do witchcraft. They may just have bitterness in them and they have a seed of bitterness that's consuming them completely. That it's easy for, for spirits to work in them and work through them. They may have a seed of hatred in them. They may have a seed of hurt in them and they're so hurt or they're so oppressed or whatever the case is that, that it's easy for spirits to manipulate in them. It's easy for them to transfer spirits and transferring spirits is, is something, it's not really necessarily witchcraft, but it's something that can happen um, easily. So I'm just saying, if you're around somebody who's extremely lustful, they don't even have to speak the word to you, but all of a sudden you feel yourself being extremely lustful or, or after them in the wrong way. It, it can be in crazy type of ways that doesn't even make sense. Like something you would never think of doing in your mind, but all of a sudden you're thinking about it or your mind's pondering upon it. This can be transferring of spirits. This can be things like that. So not only is witchcraft, you know, people trying to control things from the spirit realm, people doing things via magic, via sorcery, via whatever. It can also be just transferring of spirits. You got to be careful. You got to equip yourself with the full armor of God. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. So the things we're fighting against are spiritual things. Number six. This one is pretty simple too. Emotional disorders. If you're having a lot of emotional disorders, just things like fear, over overwhelming amounts of fear, overwhelming amounts of anxiety, shame, confusion, this is something that can indicate witchcraft in your life. We know that God hasn't given us a spirit of fear. His word says to cast our anxieties upon him because he cares for us. His word says that we're the apple of his eyes. So what are we shameful for? His word says that the same mind that abides in him also abides in us. So, and he says that he is not the author of confusion. So if you're suffering from overwhelming amounts of fear, anxiety, shame, or confusion, then this could indicate witchcraft in your life. This could indicate people either working working witchcraft on you or something that you open the door to yourself. Now, if you open the door to demonic spirits, it may not necessarily be witchcraft, but it still kind of falls in the same category because these spirits are now altering your life. These spirits are now controlling what it is that you're doing because you're so fearful. Oh my God, I'm having panic attacks. Oh my God, I can't. I'm, I'm telling you firsthand. I used to be so, I used to have anxiety so bad. I would you could ask anybody, ask my mom, ask my brothers. We would pull up to stores and I'd be like, I can't go in there. I can't get out the car. I, I can't go in there. I would literally like 
force my little brother to get in the car with me and I would drive around to like four different stores, like just say Walmart, for example, four different Walmarts and sit in the parking lot and think, oh God, I can't go on this one. I can't go on this one. I got to go to a different one. I got to go to, I had anxiety so bad, but it was spiritual. It was spiritual. It was spiritual. And if, if you have fear over, and I'm talking about overwhelming, like I'm not talking about like, oh, that scared me or something like that, but I'm talking about overwhelming fear to the point that like, you are trembling in fear because of something or like even to the point that you'll see like um people who are operating under the spirit of fear they'll say things to you like oh you are scared of that oh that that doesn't make you afraid oh i couldn't do that and you see that fear is literally controlling their life they can't do things because of this fear that they just feel however they feel and, it, and it's oppressing them these are overwhelming spirits overwhelming emotional disorders because it's not supposed to be like that according to the word of god so these are things that can come upon you via witchcraft or via you open the door to it yourself now this is number six here before we get into the the final one which is the biggest one and i know this video is already long but I feel like people who are going through this will watch the whole video and get what they need out of it. Or people who are watching, you know, I feel like if God bring you to this video, he bring you to this video for a reason. Most of the time, um, you know, you end up seeing things or hearing things that God wanted you to hear. And it's, it's not just like, oh, like it just happened just to happen. No, everything happens for a reason. So anyway, number six, family prognosis AKA generational curses. Now this is a big one. This is a big one that can show witchcraft in your life. Now, this may not be something you ever did. It may not be something your parents ever did. It may not be something your grandparents ever did, but somewhere in your bloodline, there was some type of uncle involvement, some type of agreement, some type of covenant that was forged that is not allowing the promises of God to be prominent in your life. These are, are generational curses, be it sickness, be it barrenness, be it no ability to make progress, be it alcoholism, be it drug use, whatever it is, it came from somewhere, but these things are not of God. If God said by your stripes, you're healed, but you see that, oh, um, you know, everybody on this side of the family died of cancer, some type of cancer. That's, that's a generational curse. That's not the will of God. That's not the will of God. If he said by his stripes we're healed, then this is not something that you should be going through. These indicate witchcraft somewhere, somehow, something happened. Something happened. Some type of covenant was forged that got people out of the will of God for their life. And it has yet to be broken if it's still continuing to go on. Barrenness. If you're in a family and, and none of the women can have babies, none of the women can can produce children then you have to look at what type of spiritual curse is operating there if the family about uh, like a lot of women had abortions and then all of a sudden you get down to this point in the family and then somebody can't have children then you have to think what door did you guys open what door what covenant was forged by by someone's actions that's causing these things on the rest of the family no no progress there's another one if you see everyone in your family or no one was ever, no one in your family has a car. Everyone's taking the bus. Everyone's asking for a ride. No one in your family can purchase a house. Everyone's living, you know, place to place, apartment to apartment for their whole entire life. They're 60 years old and never, never was able to rent a home or something like that. Never able to rent a condo or something like that or get a mortgage or something like that. These are, are generational curses because it's not supposed to be like that. It's not supposed to be like that. So... These things are can be generational curses and more than likely, I'm going to say 90% of the time, 95% of the time, if there's some type of generational curse, there was some type of witchcraft worked or some type of covenant forged with the kingdom of darkness. More than likely, because the promises of God are yes and amen. So if these promises are not prominent in your life and you see the pattern in your family, you see the pattern in your family, then it was some type of it was some type of agreement. It was some type of covenant. If there's like, if your your parents are an alcoholic and your grandparents are an alcoholic and before your great grandparents were an alcoholic and now you have this spirit on you that you can't seem to break for anything, you can't seem to get out of it, that's a curse. The, the Bible says be sober-minded. The Bible says be sober and be vigilant. 
So if you can't operate in the will of God, in the promises of God, in his commandments, if it's overwhelming to the point that you can't do these things, then you have to look at, is someone working witchcraft in your life? Or what covenant was forged that, that's making these overwhelming things happen in your life? So now, this is the biggest one. Number seven, dreams. Now, like I said before, if you don't believe in dreams, if you don't believe that dreams are clear-cut spiritual knowledge, if you don't believe that dreams will give you indication of things in the spirit realm, if you don't believe that dreams will, will reveal things to you, then you can click off right now because this is a big part. And I know this video is long. I'm going to try to make this quick. But just a few dreams that I personally know indicate witchcraft via research, via clear-cut revelation from the Bible and the Holy Spirit, or via, um, I learned it somewhere, via YouTube, um, Pastor Stephen Darby, Pray Against Witchcraft. Um, he talks a lot about dreams there. Kevin Ewing, dreams indicating witchcraft in your life. Joshua Orkey, um, he, he, all he does is really interpret dreams and he, he talks so much about it. Um, a lot of these people that are on YouTube will give you deeper indication to understand your dreams. So I'm not a dream professional. You should, if you want deeper, deeper understanding into this, go check out the people who I just mentioned, but I'm just going to give you a few reasons and a few things that indicate what's crap in your life um, via your dreams. Astro projection. If you have dreams where you're astral projecting out of your body, like I'm talking about how I explained in um, one of my other videos, the fasting one-on-one -on -one video, how I astral projected out of my body and I was seeing like my body other places um, in the house and it was like right after sleep paralysis, this is definitely in the indication that you have witchcraft in your life. These are spirits. The only thing these are happening is spirits. Sleep paralysis. 99.9% .9 of the time, if you have a feeling that you're being held down by a demon, you can't get up. Well, it's not even a feeling. That's what's happening. If you're having sleep paralysis, there's a spiritual demon holding you down. There's a spirit pinning you to your bed or wherever you're at that you can't get up. It's spiritual. 100%. Not even going to say 99%. If you're having sleep paralysis, if you don't believe in dreams, you don't believe in whatever, this is demonic. This is demonic. This can clear cut indicate witchcraft in your life. If you're having nightmares, I'm talking about, I'm not just saying like dreams that are scary. I'm talking about full nightmares where you wake up, <gasps> you can't breathe because you're so afraid or you wake up and you're crying or whatever the case is, you're having nightmares that indicates witchcraft in your life. Dirty water dreams. If you're having dreams of dirty water, it could indicate witchcraft in your life. Now I'm going to tell you, I've had a series of dreams with this, a series of dreams with it. And um, two different times, it was, I was like on some type of, it wasn't really a bridge, but I guess it could be considered a bridge. It was like a bridge type thing leading up to a restaurant, but the water was dirty underneath this little bridge thing. And um, exes were there and it was weird. Somehow I got in the water, it was terrible. It indicates witchcraft. Another dream I had, but this one was actually a good dream of dirty water. Now, this dream happened after I started getting revelation, after I came to the Lord. After I, I used to, let me tell you, pretty much every fast that I went on in my life, and I fasted quite often since I came to the Lord. But every time, I, a part of the fast was dedicated to Lord, this witchcraft that's against me, this witchcraft that's against me. Give me revelation and things like that. So, um, through fasting, I found a lot of these things out. So after fasting and coming to the Lord, I had two different dreams. And this is kind of about the queen of the coast. If anyone knows about this queen of the coast thing, then you can understand. You guys can go look it up. But these are like spirits, basically principalities, because they're high ranking spirits that, um, you know, people make sacrifices to, people make altars to, people worship these spirits. So after I started fasting and coming to the Lord, I had this one dream where it was like this thing was in my bed. This thing was in my bed. It didn't look like a girl. It didn't look like a boy. It was just a thing in the dream. And then like it was trying to come all up on me and it it, it had like a bunch of reptile parts on it. Like, like a, not like a lizard, but like alligator 
little things because it was you know how lizards can be smooth like it had like not scales but it was like a rough and in the dream like i had to i don't know something i don't really remember the whole thing but i got up out of there and then i didn't understand that dream then but then i had another dream and it was in this dirty water somehow i was standing though on dry land but i was looking at this dirty mucky water and it was like a lady but she had these same type of scaly things on her butt and she had a human body not like a mermaid though it wasn't like a mermaid all cute like it was some weird i, I hope you guys don't think i'm completely crazy because i know it sounds like i'm completely nuts but i'm not but i'm not this was some spirit and this thing was after prayer and fasting when i was praying against these things and the spirit was looking like looking at me swimming in the water but it, it didn't bother me then now i had built up some type of some type of protection against it through praying and through fasting where it was looking at me in that dirty mucky water but it couldn't bother me then so if you're dreaming of dirty mucky water um or you're having dreams of any of these weird reptile women or whatever look into the queen of the coast and start renouncing and denouncing anything that you've done that could have bring these people into your life now i've heard a lot of things that can open the door to this dressing provocatively you know fornicating all these weave they they say a lot of things it's like a sacrifice to this queen of the coast thing i haven't done too much research on it so i'm not going to speak on it too much but what for whatever reason this thing was attacking me in my dreams and after prayer and fasting i was finally able to, to whatever away from it anyway if you're having blood in your dreams this happened a lot for me dreams of like you're female like you have your period in the dream or you just have random blood places. Um, you see other people shedding blood or something in the dream. This all indicates witchcraft. If you see bleeding in the dream, it could also mean a blood sacrifice has been put against you. Especially if you see it offered. Like um, I had a dream after fasting that um, I was in some weird place. I remember this dream so clearly. It was like I was riding down. A, I was riding a bike, but down some like lonely like dark weird it was it was like how you know how like when it's um rainy out and it's cloudy but it's still like bright it's still like daytime it doesn't look completely dark it was like i was riding like pedaling this bike down this thing and the next thing i know i was in this place and it was these two weird looking people like they were looking at me weird and they looked demonic and weird i didn't even know i was there and they were sacrificing an animal they had this animal like hinged up about to kill it you might have dreams of clear-cut sacrifices happening and it's revelation showing you these things that are happening in the spirit realm, especially if you're a dreamer and you're seeing them, these are not just for no reason. They're trying to, it's either they're trying to seek covenants, they're trying to seek covenants and make agreements with you via your dreams. If you're, if you're closing doors to sin in your life, you're closing doors to sin so sin can't get in, they'll start coming to you in your dreams to try to make covenants with you, especially if you have a generational curse, especially if, if someone in your bloodline sold you to an altar um sold your destiny to an altar or they made some type of covenant hey i don't i want this now and you can take what you want later i want riches now and you can have the fourth generation and and afterwards if they made something like that you'll have dreams of, of sacrifices happening you'll have things like that so if you have blood in the dream or sacrifices like bloodshed of animals bloodshed of people whatever that indicates witchcraft in your life Animal attacks and dreams. That's a huge one. Animal attacks and dreams. You're having animal attacks. Um, oh my God. I had, I know I'm not crazy, you guys. I feel so crazy talking about it because it's weird. But the thing is, it's like, if you know how real the spirit realm is and you're a dreamer, if you're a, like, I talk to, I talk about my dreams like they, they really happen in real life because that's how strong I know it is. I, the spirit realm is much more realer than anything on this earth. If you have clear-cut dreams, if you're a straight dreamer where you dream things and they happen that exact way, that's awesome. Don't don't ever like overlook it. If you have dreams and you get spiritual things revealed unto you and you and you got confirmation and you know that that's true, thumbs up. Now, don't ever overlook these things. Every all the spiritual intelligence that you're getting from your dreams, don't bypass it. Don't bypass it. Don't just act like, oh, that's just a dream and not 
and not um, either pray against it, come against it, fast against it, or agree with it if it's something of God. Don't ever just overlook it. So animals have some dreams. I had a dream one time during fasting. I was sitting in this room, sitting in this room, and it was like, it for some reason, it looked like the room of, like, like you know how at a church, you, they have separate rooms, like the foyer of a church, basically, before you go into the actual church, the foyer of a church. It's like, that's where I was sitting. And it was three people, two ladies and one guy. And um, they were feeding me in the dream. This is another one. If you're eating in the dream, witchcraft, they were feeding me in the dream. And while they were feeding me, these dogs were walking around. I'm talking about huge, huge black Rockweiler dogs. And it had to be two or three of them in the dream. And I'm talking about like they kept looking at me and they weren't doing anything. And then when I started eating this food that they had given me, these dogs were viciously like barking after me, coming after me in the dream. If you're having dreams like that, animal attacks in the dream, this is indicating witchcraft. I also had other dreams with bears and lions and all kind of stuff chasing me and stuff like that. I had dreams of straight up getting shot in the dream and I was still okay. It's because of divine protection. I had, let me get into the next part. If you have dreams where you're dying or people are trying to kill you, this indicates witchcraft in your life. Now, like I said, I had dreams where um, I was getting like shot at in the dream, like shot in my legs, but I was perfectly fine still moving in the dream. If you have a dream where people are trying to kill you and you don't die, that's divine protection right there. That's divine protection. If you're dying in the dream, you need to, to get on a fast quickly, quickly change your life and, and go run to God. Don't even just go to him, run to him. Because anything that happens in the spirit realm will eventually come to the natural. The spirit realm is the origin of everything. We made it clear in Ephesians 6, 12, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. Anything that, and like in the, um, the Bible, when Jesus cursed the fig tree, he said it with his words, he cursed it. And then through via the words, the, the tree didn't bear fruit after that. So it happened spiritually first. Like if you could see things in the spirit realm, if you could see the words that you, that you speak changing things in the spirit realm, you'd be careful of what you said. If you, if you know that the dreams that you dream are indications from the spirit realm, revelation from the spirit realm, or foretelling things from the spirit realm, if you're one of those type of dreamers, then you would pay close attention to this. So if you're dying in a dream, you need to um, really 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 seek god so um i have a lot of events where people were trying to kill me in the dream one person specifically that i'm going to get into let me get into this person now this person the same person that i talked about in the beginning of the story that was um ups, putting witchcraft on me basically because i crashed your car um i've had a lot of dreams i'm like let me just be blunt with it this person has been working witchcraft on me for a long time. When I was six years old, if you hold in my testimony video, which I didn't get deep into that person, I had a dream that um, there was a huge python wrapped around me. I'm six years old. I still remember this dream clearly. And it was wrapped around me outside of the elementary school that I went to at that time. Now, I clearly remember this. This is when I know I, I could dream. I had dreamed once. I remember one dream before that. That I was like four years old, but this is when I knew I had something, something. So I dreamt this dream and this person, the same girl was standing right there as this, this big, huge snake was wrapped around me and she wasn't helping me. And at that age, I didn't understand the dream. I didn't mean, I don't even think I even told anybody about it at that time. I wasn't scared. I was just like, what, what is this? So from that time period on, I guess that person was against me. It'll be those ones close to you. It'll be those ones close to you. Now, this is person, we, we done fought chicks together. We done fought dudes together. We done did illegal things together. We have gotten in trouble together. We could have been in jail together. But that same person that I was willing to fight for, willing to get locked up with, was the same one that was working against me in the spirit realm. And I never knew until I started understanding the things that I dreamt. So, um... I wrote this down. Um, I had a dream one night. I'll go to the first one. This was really quickly after I started um, really coming to the Lord. If you heard in the other video, I talked about um, the astral projecting. This was shortly after that, a few days after that. Mind you, when I astral projected after that fasting, 
And I told you those people were coming to me in my dreams with that paper signed with blood, written in blood or whatever, whatever blood covenant was forged. I believe that was for my bloodline. And then the witch who was trying to come to me in the mall and, and give me her socks and all that stuff like that. You got to watch the last video or else I'm just going to sound crazy. But after that, I started getting more dreams. So I had this dream um, that I was back. If you And another thing is, if you have dreams that you're back somewhere, you have dreams at your old place of living, at your old home, at your old school. If you, you're 25 years old, but you're dreaming of your elementary school, you're 25 years old, but you're dreaming of um, the house you stayed in when you were 10. These are indicating witchcraft. These are indicating spirits of backwardness. These are indicating spirits of anti-progress. You got to pray against it. So I had this dream that I was outside of somewhere that I stayed when I was in high school. And um, the weird thing is where I stayed was like here. And then if you keep walking, there's a light. And then once you cross the street is where this person stayed. So in this dream, like I'm getting hit. There's nothing there. There's no car hitting me. There's no person hitting me. But my body is getting like, basically, I don't even have anything to demonstrate with. But just like if, if. Let's say you were getting hit by a car over and over and over again. This is what my body was doing in the dream. In the dream, I'm walking down this, this sidewalk, but it's like my body's going here, my body's going there, my body's going here, my body's going there, and it's getting hit. And the whole time that this is happening, I'm screaming, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus in the dream. This is what's happening. And I'm walking, and then I end up right in front of where that person stayed. That was the first indication, like, hey, there's something not right about this. And the thing was, like, I really believed that this person was my friend. So even when that happened, I was still doubting it. Like, I don't know why I'm dreaming that. I don't know why I'm dreaming that. I didn't want to believe. I did not want to believe that this person was doing that against me. So that was happening. My battery's dying. Let me hurry up. Um, that was happening. That dream happened. And then I started having other dreams about this person. This person was driving me. We were in a Jeep. I don't even know where. They were driving me and we were in some mountains or something and they were speeding like up these mountains, down these mountains, all type of stuff like that. If you have dreams where people are driving you, other people are driving you, you don't know these people, whatever. They're trying to alter your life. They're, they're trying to, 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 to take you where they want you to go in your life. So that's another dream that indicates witchcraft. And then another dream that I had about this person literally... I was in the state that they stay in now. This is this is the one that really put the icing on the cake because I had visited them in that state before. But like I'm not from that state. I don't I never lived in that state, but I was in the state that they're in now, in some place and there were a bunch of other people around. But for some reason I'm on a table with some long type of, of knife or steak or whatever you want to call it being stuck through my heart stuck through me and blood's coming out but i'm completely okay in the dream thank god for his divine protection thank god that i learned to put the armor on me before i go to sleep thank god that i plead the blood of jesus over myself because literally if you're having dreams like this these people are, are are putting an image on an altar of you and they're trying to kill you they're trying to come against you fully fully come against you and if you don't know you won't be able to reject it if you're not in the lord these things that they're doing you know, they can eventually come to pass. If you don't have somebody, if you don't know the Lord yourself and you don't have somebody praying for you, you don't have somebody pleading the blood of you. I thank God that my mom was in the church, is in the church. I thank God that there's a lot of my family members who were in the church. So when I was wicked and wild and didn't know any of these things, I was constantly dreaming. I never stopped dreaming. Before I even came to the Lord, I was dreaming prominent things that I didn't even know what to say or do about. But thank God that somebody was praying for me, that the devil didn't take me out when he had many chances to thank God for his divine protection. Thank God that he had a will in my plan from in a, a plan for my life. Thank God for that. Because I'm telling you, these type of things and dreams, it, it gives you clear cut indication of what you're up against. Now, if people chasing you in dreams, people are chasing you in dreams. This is another thing. Somebody's running after you. You keep having dreams. People are running after you, chasing you or whatever. You keep having dreams like... um. This is another thing. If you see police and things in your dreams, this is spiritual assistance. If you're having dreams where you're getting chased, you're getting attacked or thing like that, ask God to send spiritual assistance. But if you're sinning, now this is something I realized through fasting too. If you're doing something that's keeping the door open to the enemy, 
Um, I've had dreams where people were attacking me. Somebody was trying to like rob me in a car and um, the police, they just flew by. That's my spiritual assistance and they just flew by. This is something you have some type of door open to the enemy. You have something that's not allowing for the spiritual assistance to come in. If you start, um, another recent dream that I had was somebody, um, like sneaking in my window and putting a snake in my bed and it was a dream. But the thing was, this setting was exactly the setting of my bedroom at that time. So snakes in dreams, people coming through windows in dreams, people doing secret things in dreams. These are all indication of witchcraft. Um, another thing, people speaking different languages in dreams. If anybody's speaking anything that you don't understand in a dream, it might be a curse, especially if it alters something. So I've had two different dreams of this. I had one dream that I, this was a long time ago before I knew anything about the Lord. Before, I mean, I knew about the Lord, but this is before. Hold on. I'm sorry. I look sleepy. I've been up since like five this morning. Well, four really. But if you're um, here having dreams where people are speaking other languages, let me get into that. Got to make it quick, quick, quick because my phone's dying. But I had a um, dream that I was in Haiti. And at this time, I'm not from Haiti, but I knew a lot of people that were Haitian when I stayed in Florida and I was dating them. If you, you listen to my testimony. Anyway, I was so, I just had this dream that I was in Haiti. And then like there was this guy there and he had like this clock and it was spinning. It was a huge clock and it was spinning. He was saying things I didn't understand. And I was just sitting there confused. Like I was looking like I was confused in the dream. And he was speaking other language. These could be curses. Another dream I had, this is probably in the last two years, um, a dream of somebody I knew, somebody that I was close to. And um, somebody, and the weird thing is, it was somebody that they knew, but someone that I didn't know that well. Like I knew who they were, but I didn't know them like that. In the dream, they were speaking this other language speaking this language to this person and in the dream this person like was next to me they got up and left me got in their car didn't look at me nothing and was gone let me tell you from that night that i had that dream the next day this person's heart was like this like literally like this it was that quick they they turned so cold to me i'm talking about so cold like like I had, I don't even know, like I had killed their, their kitten or something like this person just went completely cold against me. If you have dreams of people speaking other languages, it could be curses. You got to pray. You have to pray. You have to equip yourself with armor. You have to seek God. So I don't want to get too much deeper. Last thing I'm going to say in the dream, if you're eating in the dream, eating in the dream is a horrible thing. Eating in the dream is something that I suffered with. It's something that I still suffer with, that I've been trying to reach out to um, people. And uh, recently, Joshua Orkey, I think, or Evangelist, Evangelist Joshua is his YouTube channel. He made um, a video, um, 10 Ways to Stop Eating in the Dreams. I thank God for it. But um, if you're eating in the dream, now the thing is, there's a scripture. Well, there's actually a few scriptures. Um, when Daniel was going on his fast, he said he didn't want to defile himself with the um the king's meats now just like here in the natural if you watch the other one of the other videos that i had the seven ways that are keeping the door open to the enemy and i said food was a big one of them just how people um, offer food to gods here in the natural um people sacrifice food to gods people kill animals and they use it as a sacrifice and then eat those meats afterwards just like you don't want to eat anything like that in the natural if you're eating in your dreams you don't know you don't know what this means. You don't know what altar this has been sacrificed to. You don't know what covenant you're forging by eating these things. You can be forging covenants with sickness. I'm talking about I've eaten in the dreams and woke up literally sick. I've eaten in the dreams and felt like acid in my stomach. Like you could literally feel like stuff in my stomach, stuff moving in my stomach, all kind of things like that. Eating in the dream is horrible. Eating in the dream is not good. I have dreams of eating raw meat, all type of stuff. These all indicate witchcraft because the thing is, if you don't have an open door to the enemy, you're, you're living in repentance, you're, you're asking God for forgiveness, you don't have an open door for the enemy to come in, he will come in your dream to forge covenants with you. And the easiest way for him to forge covenants with you is to give you something to eat in the dream. Because once you eat it, it shows agreement. And if you don't wake up and rebuke it and reject it and, and go on fast to purge your body, whatever's in there, that covenant will stand. So that's a huge one. But I'm not going to say 
100% of the time because I've had two dreams that were from the Lord and I was eating or drinking in the dream. One of them was a big one. This person that I've been telling you about with um, the girl that was doing witchcraft about me and then the other person that I was just talking about where the, someone was speaking another language in the dream and they told turned cold to me. I had one dream and this was in a period of fasting and um, it was like, I don't even know who this person was. I don't know who this person was, but they, they led me. They literally like led me to a table and I was holding like, you know, like, um, like a chalice, like, like a fancy glass and it was gold, like, and it was a huge glass. I was holding it. Um, and it had like wine in it. Right. But them two were sitting at the table together. This, they don't even know each other. He was sitting on one side of the table and she was sitting on one side of the table and they were there and I was standing, but they couldn't see me. I was standing with this person that led me there, this spirit that led me there. And, um, I had this glass and, um, in the glass, they were showing me this and they, in the dream, they were showing me this. And then I took a sip out of it and I woke up. And as soon as I woke up, as soon as I woke up, the spirit said, um, oh, I'll prepare a table before you in the place of your enemies. As soon as I woke up, that's the scripture I heard in my head. So, and then I had one more dream where eating in the dream was actually okay. I was again being led by a spirit and, and this one it was a good spirit, um, being led by, and I was in like this field and it had, um, all these trees, like all these fruit trees, banana trees, coconut trees. And, um, and like they gave me something right. They picked the, uh, some type of fruit. I don't, I don't know what kind of fruit it was. I've never seen it. But the, the fruit, they gave me a drink of it right there, right then in the dream. And it was so like the sweetest thing ever. And it was good. So that was an actual good dream where eating in the dream is actually good. So let me end this because this video is getting too long and my phone's dying. Um, I hope you guys don't think I'm completely nuts. Because if you don't understand the spirit realm and you hear this, you're just going to think that I'm crazy. But I'm not. But I thank you guys for coming to my channel. I hope this video helps someone. And I hope you guys soaked up some knowledge. And once again, as always, I'm just a nobody who's trying to tell everybody about Christ Jesus. Bye.